they say the early bird gets the worm, but man, it's early. And then look how cold it is, having all the birds flown south. Well, good morning. It's currently 4.45 a.m. I got the little Toyota Corolla loaded up with everything I need for the next couple of days out on the road, including the roof rake. Uh, outside temperature is six degrees. However, there's a wind chill, so it feels like minus eight. Um, I need to get to the truck and use the roof rake to clean all the snow off the truck and trailer um, because I gotta go to work today. So yeah, thought I'd vlog my day. Well, it's probably hard to see in that previous clip um, how much snow is actually on top of the trailer. I'm gonna guess there's probably uh, two inches of snow on top of my trailer um, and it's getting even colder out like the outside temperature right now is three degrees real feel is minus 11 um, yeah so I'm gonna get out right now and use the roof rake I already did the truck um, and all the snow came off and I was able to chip away at a bunch of ice that was on the truck too so I feel comfortable with the truck being cleaned off uh, now I'm gonna attack the trailer and yeah man it's freaking cold out holy sh Nikes so yeah I'm gonna turn the reefer on to get it down to temperature or get it up to the temperature the shipper wants it at this is kind of a fresh load so it doesn't have to be really cold and it starts start and stop which is nice but yeah I just got warmed up back here in the car now I'm gonna go out and roof rake the uh, trailer. So this is a roof rake. It's just a long couple sections of metal with a rake on the end of it and you throw it up on your roof and you pull down the snow all right for me to get to the other side of the trailer i need to move the trailer out because i got a truck on the other side uh but the driver's side of the trailer is all cleaned off i just need to get to the passenger side now and like i said i have to move the truck or move the trailer to do that so i'm gonna hook the truck up to the trailer now and um yeah use the roof rake on the other side Man, it took like six, seven tries for me to get under the trailer and get it locked in. Um, the release arm wouldn't go in all the way, so the jaws weren't locking around the kingpin fully. Uh, make sure that you get out and inspect it, um, especially in cold weather because your grease freezes up. back in the truck uh, I got the truck hooked up to the trailer that took a little bit it took about seven times for me going underneath the trailer trying to get the jaws to lock in um, in this cold weather that grease that's in your locking jaws freezes up so don't be afraid to do it multiple times double triple check to make sure your jaws are locked into place and that the release arm has gone all the way back in that's the problem i was having is my release arm wasn't going all the way back in because the grease was frozen so i kept hitting it like i said i think i did it about five or six times um and then i got all the snow or as much of the snow off the truck and trailer as i can using the roof rake i feel confident that i've done my due diligence i feel safe now driving the truck down the road and to be honest like i covered my ass nobody can say i was negligent if some snow does or a piece of ice falls off my truck i have video proof that i have spent the last hour 
cleaning all the snow off of my truck. So now it's time to do the pre-trip, make sure all the lights and everything work, and then I can get on the road. Just checked in here at the customer, uh, the shipper. Man, it is cold out. Air temperature is minus two, real fuel is minus 18. Um, and I'm back at it again, this is LTL freight. And something I'm learning about LTL reefer freight is it doesn't mean there's multiple stops, it just means there's a lot of POs. Um, so when I bid this load, it was for two stops uh, and they cut one right away because evidently that cold storage facility is closed for the holidays. So I only have one stop now, six POs. Um, it's gonna take up about three quarters of the truck um, the other stop I think was four POs and they cut that. So yeah, um, and I'm learning how to bid LTL freight. Cause here's the thing, LTL freight isn't bid normally like on your rate per mile. It's bid more on like the weight of all the product, how many stops you have, pallet positions, meaning how many pallets do you have? Um, and in, by no means am I a master at booking LTL freight. I'm, I'm learning and I'm taking advice from other, other people I know that haul LTL freight. But if you break it down, this load on all miles, now remember it was two stops. Um, I booked it, if you break it down per mile, it's $3 a mile. Um, and they had no problem with that, uh, which maybe I underbid it. I mean, that's a, that's definitely a possibility but I'm working very hard with this customer to, to have them like have us be a contracted carrier for them. Um, so I, you know, I'm very profitable, profitable at $3 a mile. So I don't mind hauling freight for $3 a mile. And if that gets me in the door and I learn more on how to bid the lane that I'm running as an LTL lane, instead of just a regular rate per mile lane, you know what, this could be my new gig. Um, We'll see how it turns out. Like I said, this is my second time hauling for this customer. They are very hard to like get into. Um, so hopefully they like the work I do. I'm here an hour and a half early for my appointment. Um, trying to be as punctual as I can. The trailer's cleaned out. The reefer's set to the temp they want it at. Maybe it'll work out. Maybe I can haul more freight out of this Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Because there's no deadhead. Where, where I'm picking up right now. I mean, very minimal deadhead. Uh, and it's going to sh Illinois, you know, uh, not far from the house. So I'm like seven and a half hours away, seven hours away from where I deliver tomorrow morning. So yeah, I'll give you all another update. I'll stop rambling. I'll give you another update uh, once I'm loaded and on the road. find my way well it's 11 a.m uh, i'm finally loaded here at the this customer the shipper uh now i gotta head to illinois um and it's just getting colder and colder here in minnesota real fuel now is minus 15 um so i'm gonna hurry up and get into the truck my nose is already cold my hands but uh yeah very simple like i got loaded once i got into a dock they loaded me right away it's only 10 pallets weighs in at 18,000 pounds. I'm getting $3 a mile to go to Illinois. Um, it's just under 500 miles. Uh, it's like 400 and, I don't know, 495 or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get on the road now. Cause I've been living life right like I could just die any minute. Going for a ride down the side. Um, I kind of foresaw happening. I have locking fuel caps and right now they're frozen shut. I did bring a bottle of rubbing alcohol with me and I'm hoping this will thaw the ice. Um, I can't even get my key in there right now. Uh, so yeah, I dumped a little rubbing alcohol in. I'm finally able to get my key all the way down, but it won't turn. So I'm going to pull the key out and put more rubbing alcohol down the hole and see if it'll break up some of the ice. 
Luckily it did and I'm finally able to get fuel. Here's a pro tip too, put a little rubbing alcohol in your windshield washer reservoir. Well, I'm here at the receiver. They allowed me to check in 10 hours early. Uh, it's currently 8.30 at night. My appointment's not until 6.30 tomorrow morning. And when I was checking in, they said, hey, uh, do you mind if we call you later tonight or early tomorrow? We're kind of ahead of schedule and we can get you unloaded early. And I'm, yeah, hell yeah, get this stuff off my truck. And another cool thing, I cut like 25 miles off this trip because I remembered like three quarters of the way down here that I've been here before um, and I knew a shortcut. I'm currently like so in the southwest corner of Illinois. I'm right, I'm near St. Louis. Um, back in 1982, I probably could have thrown a pigskin to St. Louis. I really hope you get that movie reference. Um, anyways, so yeah, the total mileage for this, including Deadhead, ended up being 486 miles. It's like 314 a mile to do this load. Uh, great load, great experience so far. Uh, hopefully I get unloaded tonight, or even if they wait until 6.30 to call me tomorrow morning, I'm fine with that. I can climb in the bunk and sleep. I still have my Vegas legs, so driving for eight hours today, eight and a half hours kind of sucked. Um, you know, anytime I come back from an extended multiple days off, it's always tough to get back into the groove. But uh, yeah, this is where I'll leave you for tonight. Um, if I get unloaded tonight, I'll pick the camera up. Otherwise, next time you see me, it'll be tomorrow morning. Well, good morning. It's 7 a.m. I'm currently being unloaded, so you might see me start moving around in the truck because they're unloading me. Uh, they did not call me into a dock early at all, um, which is fine. It allowed me to sleep. I was actually pretty tired. Um, they called me into a dock at 6.15. They started unloading me about 10 minutes ago. Um, I should be unloaded in no time. I think it's only like 10 or 11 pallets. Um, yeah, and that's going to end this vlog. Um, as soon as I'm done with this load, I am going to call the uh, shipper because they're a direct shipper and the contact person I have and I'm going to kiss their butt and uh, try and weasel my way into maybe hauling some contracted freight for them or at least get on a load list that they email me every day on the loads that their contracted haulers don't want. Man, I'll take the leftovers because I think I'm done working the spot market. Uh, I want to haul all contracted freight. That's my goal. That's a business goal for 2023. So yeah, I hope everybody has a great day. If you haven't already, give me a thumbs up on this video. And until next time, you know what it is. Keep on trucking.